topic we'll be discussing are is the important drugs in case of the rheumatoid arthritis we'll start off with questions first one in case of the glucocorticoids comment on the glucocorticoid use in case of the rheumatoid arthritis the second question is a uh, comment on the methotrexate use in case of the rheumatoid arthritis in this video you'll find the answers to these question and learn in detail about this topic so to begin with firstly we have uh, the important drugs that is the NSAIDs so NSAIDs what is the speciality of this NSAIDs so NSAIDs if you see it is nothing but a analgesic it's a analgesic and a anti-inflammatory anti-inflammatory it is used as an adjunctive it is used as an adjunctive so adjunctive for what adjunctive for the management of the uncontrolled for the management of the uncontrolled symptoms so it is used in case of the uncontrolled symptoms and in acute flares and in case of the acute flares second one is we also use the glucocorticoids so what is the use of the glucocorticoids it is used in case of same the acute flare for rapid control for the rapid control as well as it is used as the initial therapy it is used as the initial the initial therapy and this is before the onset of action this is before this is before the onset of action it is before the onset of action of the demands so there is also a chronic administration of low doses there's a before that let's just recap what we did here so we discussed about the important drugs in rheumatoid arthritis to begin with we saw the red sets and then we also covered a little bit of the glucocorticoids so what is the speciality of NSAIDs? NSAIDs are nothing but they are analgesics as well as it is anti-inflammatory. So it is analgesic and anti-inflammatory. What is the use? It is used as an adjunctive. It is used as an adjunctive and for the management. Management of what? Management of the uncontrolled symptoms and acute flares. It is used in the management of the uncontrolled symptoms as well as the acute flares. Next, we also looked at the example of the glucocorticoids so glucocorticoids are also used in case of the acute flare and this is for the rapid control as well as the for the initial therapy so what is the example here so this was given in case of it is given has a before so the initial therapy it is given as initial therapy before the onset of the action of DMAR now moving ahead the chronic administration you also give a chronic administration chronic administration so the chronic administration is given this is given in case of it is given as low doses the chronic administration and this given in case of uh, is given as low doses this is needed if the patient is inadequate this inadequate response to demand so in case the patient has inadequate so they have an inadequate response so the inadequate response and this is to the demand so here what are the examples the examples include the prednisolone so the prednisolone is nothing but it is oral then there is also the Triamp Sinalon. So Triamp Sinalon is nothing but it is intra articular. Intra articular. So then we move on to the DMAR. So what is this DMAR? So DMAR is nothing but it is a disease modifying. Disease modifying anti rheumatoid drug this we already know and now we are going to look at the conventional demands
before that let's just recap so we saw about the glucocorticoids so glucocorticoids in case of it is given as chronic administration of low doses this is given in cases of inadequate response to the demand so what does the example include the examples it includes the prednisolone prednisolone is nothing but given orally then there is also the triamcinolone triamcinolone is given intra articular then we are moving to a class of demands demands is nothing but the disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs and here there we also looked at the conventional demands now we'll be looking at the drugs in case of the conventional demands so the conventional demands it includes there is a mtx so what is mtx mtx is nothing but methotrexate and this mtx it is nothing but anti it is a anti folate drug methotrexate is a anti folate drug the demand of choice and the anchor drug for combination therapy this is the demand the demand of choice this is the demand of choice as well as it is known as a anchor drug it is a anchor drug so anchor drug for the combination therapy anchor drug for a combination therapy it is anchor drug for the combination therapy then there is also for the here the regular regular lft monitoring this is a must this has to be done then we also have there is so you saw the methotrexate then the hydroxy hydroxy chloroquine so what is this role of the hydroxy chloroquine so hydroxy chloroquine it is used in case of the monotherapy so it is used for monotherapy and what is it used for it is for the early it is for the early plus the mild diseases it is used for the early as well as the mild diseases and also and also in combination with combination it is given in combination with other demands so this is only in cases of severe diseases severe cases so let's recap so we saw about the methotrexate methotrexate is uh, it is a anti foliate foliate drug and it is the demand of choice and also the anchor drug for the combination therapy and here what we do is the lft monitoring should be required then we also looked at the hydroxychloroquine hydroxychloroquine is nothing but a monotherapy and it is for the early as well as the mild diseases and it is in combination with the other demands it is in combination with the other demands in case of some severe conditions then we also are looking at another drug known as a sulfa the sulfa salazine so what is this sulfa salazine sulfa salazine is nothing but a salicylate So sulfa salazine is a salicylate. So what does it do? It reduces the it reduces it reduces the radiographic progression. So it reduces the radiographic progression. It reduces radiographic progression of disease of the disease. And the other drug we are going to see is the leflunamide so leflunamide it is nothing but a pyrimidine synthase it is a pyrimidine pyrimidine synthase inhibitor so it is used as an alternate it is used as an alternate to the mtx later on we are also looking at the biologicals now let's recap so we saw the conventional demands we were, we already covered the methotrexate and the hydroxychloroquine 
Now we'll be looking at the other drugs that is a sulfasalazine. So in the sulfasalazine, it's a salicylate, and uh, it reduces the radiological radiographic progression. So it reduces the radiographic progression of the disease. Next comes is the leflunamide. The leflunamide. So it is nothing but a pyrimidine synthase inhibitor. and it is used as an alternative to the mtx what is mtx it is the methotrexate and then we are left off with the biologicals so in terms of biologicals it includes there is uh, the tnf so the tnf alpha antagonist so tnf alpha antagonist so this tnf alpha antagonist it is used in combination of the mtx it is used in combination with the mtx and it has a high risk of serious bacterial infection so increased risk of the bacterial infection so it has increased risk of bacterial infection as well as the opportunistic as well as a opportunistic fungal infection as well as opportunistic fungal infection and the reactivation of latent tb and the reactivation reactivation of the latent tb the tnf alpha inhibitors are the examples the examples include the adda adalimumab the golimumab and tera etanercept e tenar sept okay etanercept then it also includes the infliximab infliximab and the cetolizumab cetolizumab so now let's recap so we started with biologicals and the first category was the tnf alpha agonist so the tnf alpha agonist is all is called given in combination with the mtx that is the methotrexate so it is um, it has a serious risk of uh, has a increased risk of bacterial infection and the opportunistic fungal infection and reactivation of the latent tb so examples in this case it includes there is a adalimumab golimumab and the, there is also the a itar etanercept etanercept then the in plexima and the sertolizumab so we saw about the tnf alpha agonist now we'll be going to the aba abatacept so what is special about the abatacept so abatacept is nothing but a t cell it is a t cell co stimulation it is a t cell co stimulation inhibitor and what is it used with it is used with a combination so it is used with a combination of the mtx it is used in combination of the mtx as well as a leflunomide then we also have the rituximab rituximab so what is the rituximab So rituximab is nothing but an anti it is an anti CD20 antibody it is a anti CD20 antibody and it is used in case of the it is used in case of the refractory disease it is used in case of the refractory disease and in combination with the MTX it is in combination with the MTX Next we'll look at the anakindra. So this anakindra is uh, an IL interleukin 1 receptor 
antagonist and it should not be combined with the anti tnf alpha so not combined not combined with the anti tnf alpha so let's recap so we were dealing with the biologicals and under that in abata sept it is nothing but uh, abata sept is a t cell co stimulation inhibitor and it is used in combination with the mtx the leflunamide drugs like these and next is we saw the rituximab rituximab is nothing but uh, anti cd20 antibody it is used in case of the refractive diseases in combination with the methotrexate next we also saw about the anakindra so it is an anti uh, il1 receptor antagonist it should not be combined it should not be combined with the anti tnf alpha next we will be looking at the il6 receptor antagonist so what is this il6 receptor antagonist so this il6 receptor antagonist it includes the tocilizumab so it includes the tocilizumab and the isarilumab so tocilizumab and the isarilumab so they are used in case of the monotherapy it is used in case of the monotherapy or the combination therapy combination therapy and in case of the moderate to severe diseases in moderate to severe severe diseases next we'll look at a small molecule category so under the small molecule category we are going to discuss the janus kinase the janus kinase inhibitors there's a jk inhibitors it includes there is a tofa the tofa citinib then the bari citinib and the upada citinib so they are used as a monotherapy or a combination therapy it is used in case of the monotherapy or a combination therapy so let's recap here so we left out with the last drug in case of the biological that is the il6 receptor antagonist and we discussed the tosi zumab tosili zumab so in case of tosili zumab and the seri lumab so they are nothing but used in case of monotherapy or in case of the combination therapy then what is the where is it used so it is used in case of the moderate to the severe disease conditions then we also saw about the small molecules the small molecules it includes the jk inhibitors jk inhibitors stands for the janus kinase inhibitors so the example is the tofa citinib then the bari citinib so here uh, we see something common that is a uh, ending with the citinib so it includes the tofa citinib then comes the bari bari citinib and lastly we also discussed the upa the upa citinib upada citinib and they are used as a monotherapy or a combination therapy so monotherapy or combination therapy now we'll be discussing the uh, question answer so the question we asked first was uh, pertaining to the glucocorticoids so this was the first question we asked comment on the glucocorticoid use so the glucocorticoids they are used in case of the acute flares they are used in case of 
acute flares and it is the role is is for the rapid control it is used for the rapid control and also an initiation therapy and initiation also the initiation therapy and initiation therapy before the onset of demand before onset of demand and there is a chronic administration of low doses a chronic administration there is a chronic administration of low dose chronic administration of the low dose is needed in patients with inadequate response in patients with inadequate response to the dmr so what does it include it includes the prednisolone prednisolone oral and the triamcinolone triamcinolone is the intraarticular so let's recap so we discussed the glucocorticoids so under the glucocorticoids we saw the acute flares so it is used in case of the acute flares for the rapid control as well as the initiation therapy before the onset of the demand then it is given in chronic administration of low doses this is in patients with inadequate response to the demand so there is administration of prednisolone that is the oral and the triamcinolone this is the intra articular so the next question we asked was comment on the use of the methotrexate so under the methotrexate we need to know that it is a anti folate drug it is a anti folate drug this is very important then the dmart of choice and the anchor drug it is a dmart it is a dmart of choice as well as the it is known as a anchor drug dmart of choice and the anchor drug for the combination therapy it is for combination combination therapy and there is a regular lft monitoring that is required in this case there is a regular regular lft monitoring is very much in this case now let's recap we saw about the mtx that is methotrexate it is a anti folate drug it is a dmart of choice as well as a ant anchor drug in case of combination therapy so in this case the lft should be monitored regularly so this was completely about the important drugs in case of the rheumatoid arthritis and to learn and grow daily please do subscribe